Hiya crafters, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to do an ink comparison and explain why I chose the inks I did and how I use them. So I have this Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide, Peacock Feathers Distress Ink, and a comparable color All That Jazz in Catherine Pooler. Here you can see this is how I store the little foams on just the little mini ink pads of Distress Ink. But uh, I have some cardstock here, 120 pound accent opaque. I have this really cool stamp set called High Five. It's a um, Julie Ebersol, uh, Ellen Hudson. And basically I wanted to show you um, the differences between these inks. I get asked often um, why I chose the lines that I did, um, how they're different, and things like that. So I thought this might be a good um, video to kind of explain why I choose what I choose and also to help you maybe if you're just starting off with crafting um, to kind of explain some of the differences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different ways to use these three different inks and kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, Distress Oxides um, come in the same colors as the Distress Inks, but the difference is they are a hybrid, meaning that they are partially pigment and partially dye. So what I like about that is it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Pigment inks sit on top of the paper or layer on other pigment inks, especially if you kind of lay dry the layers in between. Um, they tend to stamp better. Uh, and then pigments typically take a really long time to dry, but because these are a hybrid, they don't take as long as a, f as a full uh, pigment ink would. So here you can see I stamped kind of a solid stamp, um, and now I'm using a blending foam. So I'm showing you the way that it looks when you use these Distress Oxides. Now I will say I do think this Distress Oxide might be a little bit on the dry side because I didn't get the best stamp with the solid image. Um, here I'm showing you the two brushes. You can see, you may have heard me mention, I have a separate set for my Oxides. You can see how it kind of gets chalky and it gunks them up a little bit. It's not my favorite to blend oxides with these brushes. I have a designated set, um, but I don't do it very often. If I want to do ink blending with oxides, I'm probably going to grab for a foam, kind of like you saw. And as you can see, you get a much lighter sort of um, color when you use the brush versus the blending foam. So just bear that in mind. Now here I'm showing you, these are actually all water reactive inks. So you can do kind of the fun ink splatter technique and kind of get that distressed look. But I'm just using a water brush from Arteza and just showing you that you can also paint with it like a watercolor. So I should have actually done the water splatter thing to kind of show you the way that the distress looks, but I forgot about that or didn't think about it until after. Um, I will say that the Distressed Oxides are a little bit different in terms of the drama with the water splatters than the Distress Ink. The reason being is when you kind of activate the Distressed Oxides with water, it's a little bit more subtle because it just kind of brings out the pigment qualities and makes it a little bit more milky rather than really kind of bleached look that you'll get with a straight dye ink. Now, Distress Inks, you can see here, it's gonna be really splotchy. Um, it's not super evident in here, but you can see it close up, and I'll show you some pictures at the end if you stick around, but I never stamp with my Distress Inks. They just don't stamp well. That's not what I use them for. So what I like about the Distress Inks is the vibrancy of the color. So I love the colors in the Distress line, but I might not always want that milkiness that you get with the Distress Oxides. So I love the versatility of being able to stamp with the Oxides and kind of build up that color, but sometimes I really want that punch, that more concentrated pigment. So that's why I wanted to have the Distress Inks as well. Now, I have the entire collection of Distress Ink colors. I have the Oxides obviously in the full pad because that's the only way they're available. And then I have all the Distress Inks in the mini because I like that for um, storage and things like that. I didn't want the full-size ink pads. So I have all the Distress Inks in the minis. 
and I have the little blending foam underneath, and then I have the full Distress Oxides. Now you can see these are technically the same color, but they look a little bit different when you have them side by side. And as you look at the pictures in the end, you'll see that chalky kind of milkiness that you get with the Distress Oxides that you don't get with the Distress Inks. So I'm just gonna work through and do the same thing, the blending foam. Now these are designated for all my dyes. So I'll use this set for any dye inks that I have. So whether that's my Distress inks or my Catherine Poolers, I will use this designated set for my dye inks. Now what dye inks do is they actually soak into the paper, which you'll see as I show you these close-up pictures. You can see that it really kind of wets that paper and saturates it. So um, another benefit of the ones that do stay wet a little bit longer, which you can do this with the Distress Oxides and with the Catherine Pooler because they don't sink in right away, is you can also heat emboss with them. So if you're quick and you have your embossing powder ready, you can stamp with the Catherine Pooler or with the Distress Oxides and still hurry up and pour some uh, powder on it and then heat emboss it. Now this, you just give it little love taps. You can see I'm kind of going over it multiple times, probably more than I need to, but I wanna make sure there's full coverage. Now one thing to bear in mind with Catherine Pooler inks is they are extremely juicy. As you saw, I showed you they're a foam pad so it's a little bit different. It's felt pads on the Distress inks and the Distress oxides. Um, but see, look, it kind of sticks to it. There's almost like a suction. So you really just need to tap it a couple times. I'm doing it extra because I, I don't want any lines from my ink pad to show on this. But you can see it is super dark. So I recommend you definitely swatch if you have any Catherine Pooler inks because they're always going to be darker than maybe what you expect and probably also what's on the, the ink pad cover. So you'll see here you get a much lighter tone, much closer to kind of the, the color that's depicted on the top of the case when you ink blend. Um, whether that's with a foam or with um, a brush, you'll see it's not quite as pigmented and dark. So these come extremely juicy. What I always do when I buy Catherine Pooler inks is I always buy the refill because the foam pads tend to dry out quicker than the felt pads. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. And I typically, if I'm able, just buy the refill right when I buy the pad so that way I have it um, and I can refill it as needed. Um, you can watercolor with these. Just like the Distress inks, you can watercolor with the pads or with the reinkers. Um, but the main thing to know about these is that they're very juicy, very pigmented, and very dark. And again, like I said, with the Distress Oxides, even though these are a dye only, they are so juicy that if you hurry, you can hurry up and emboss with them. So that is kind of a cool feature. And again, all of these are water reactive, so you can get that cool Distress look. I will say the, the my favorite of the water splotches is probably with the Distress inks, which is another reason I like to have those. So I hope this gives you some explanation between the difference between dye ink. Here you can see it's really kind of splotchy with the stamping and the stamping on um, the Distress ink. Now, for some reason, like I said, I, it wasn't a great impression with the Distress Oxide. Normally they stamp better than that. I think my pad was just a little bit dry. So if you want something for stamping, like solid stamps, word stamps, I would do either Distress Oxide or Catherine Pooler. If you want something just for the colors of Distress Ink, but you're gonna use it maybe less for stamping, more for blending um, or watercoloring or things like that, then the just Distress Ink is a great line. But I hope this helps explain kind of some of the difference between pigment and dye, some of the ways that I use it. And if you found this helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll link everything in the video description box below. And thanks for watching, bye.